And uh, we're joined by Pete from Black Spiders. Thanks for thanks for joining us, Pete. How are you keeping, mate? I'm all right, Lee. Yes, thank you very much. Doing well, you know, under the current situation. Uh, things could be better, could be out doing gigs, but it's not going to happen for a while. I think so, you know, all good. Plenty uh, of so, creativity going, so it's all it's all it's all happening still. Yeah, that's good, man. I mean, obviously, you guys recently um, announced your reformation, your reunion, and all that. Uh, I, first time I saw you guys was down in two thousand nine, so I've been a fan a while, and obviously glad to have you back on the scene. What made you guys come back and uh, start jamming again? Well, we've been we've been chatting for it. Uh, we've been chatting about it for a while, mm. um, and then we just thought, you know, we've got well, we've got some ideas. Me and Ozzy started looking at those ideas and we just thought we'd better make it a reality, really, you know, um, and, uh, and, and and bring some rock back. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and yeah, I, I guess I guess it was it was it was a, an, an it was an inevitable thing. It just, just and it was it was difficult to say when it was going to be. Did you guys always envisage coming back at some point then, or when you put a, a pin yeah, in it? You know, I mean, we just, at the end? Yeah, yeah, we just needed a bit of a break from it, really, because, you know, it was um, it was taking up a lot of our time. It was taking up a lot of our um, our time to make some income because we weren't really making anything from the band, particularly. Mm. You know, the band was basically just, at the time, making money to, to be a band. Yeah. If you know what I mean, so it was like you know all the any income that was coming into the band was just kind of keeping the wheels going basically. So um, yeah, we needed a bit of time for that, and you know um, there was a lot of things going off in 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 a couple of the band members' personal lives that just you know just needed some time out from it. Really. Yeah, just needed that time to yeah sort out you know, what you had to sort out. Yeah, you know, I mean, a few things were inevitable, and they just needed to be you know, done in private, I think. So, you know, okay. one of those things we just needed to have some time to um, to regroup and um, and then see when the time is right to, to come back at it, really. Yeah. So how comes uh, Tiger Sai isn't involved this time around? And then was he just sort out stuff still or was he just he, doing a thing? Well, basically, you know, Tiger, Tiger was... You know, he was he was obviously he was definitely up for it, and we wanted him to do it. And you know, like the like we wanted to come back as the five of us, you know, like the original five members. Um, but um, Sire's got a lot of things going on in his personal life that that, that kind of means um, it was difficult for him to 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 try and make any sort of commitment that the band might put on him, really. Um, and you know. Yesterday, which was Halloween, um, Cy and his Mrs. Chelsea uh, welcomed their new son into the world. Oh, well, so, I'll pass on my congratulations, Tim. I will do, mate. So, you know, so now he's got two very small children and, you know, he's, 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 he's got a lot of juggling to do. So Yeah, uh, I can imagine. So, yeah, so I think it was a very difficult decision for him um, and he probably still would love to do it, but I just think it's you know it's just one of those things where um it, it would it would make it very difficult for him and it would put a strain on the band and everything else as well yeah just at this point in time he's got like you said we're saying before you've got to do what you've got to do and he's got to go and uh, be dad which is you know i think anyone would understand that one two young kids to try and juggle is a i'm 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 rushed, rushed off me fit enough and i've got me two nephews over and i can give them back so Yes, it's very true. You know, I mean, so um, yeah, you know, I think I think a lot of people know about size situation, so I think it's understandable for for some people. But obviously, you know, for the like like for the greater public, it's 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 one of those things that's been private for him. So, um, you know, you never know. Like one day he might want to he, he might want to get back into it. You know, I'm sure he wants to do music and he misses it and everything. But I, I, I just think I just think he's um, he's not able to at the moment. No, no, fair play. So, how did the uh, you know how did Wyatt end up getting involved um, after it was sort of felt that Sai couldn't commit? Well, um, yeah, we were just about to go in the studio when Sai sort of you know said that he, he he didn't think he'd be able to commit to it, 
so I, I'd sort of struck up a bit of a conversation with with Wyatt. I mean, we'd met we'd met before. Um, he'd interviewed the band a few times, um, and you know, we struck up a bit of a conversation. A bit, you know, a bit of a friendly bit of banter. Yeah. And then I'd actually, and then I'd heard him doing Symbols of Appreciation. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been enjoying uh, it, man. Like what, as as the lock, because because basically we were like we'd we'd booked to go in the studio, and then the lockdown happened. Um, so we weren't sure whether or not we were going to actually be able to get in to do it or not. And um, and then I started just talking to Wyatt and 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 just thought, oh, you know, you know, because we were looking for a new drummer. I, I just sort of posed the question to him of whether he'd be interested in being in a band because uh, I wasn't sure if he was in a band or whether he'd been in bands before or, you know, what yeah. the situation outside of that was. And, um, and sent him a couple of the tracks that we'd sort of demoed up over the first part of the um, the lockdown wave, um, and he sort of came back to us almost the same day. Well, it was the same day uh, with his own recorded drums on the top. Oh wow! And we were like, "Wow, that's amazing!" So as soon as, as soon as we were able to get into the studio and, and the restrictions were down, um, we got in the studio with him, even though we'd not met him. You know, like well. Even though we've not seen him recently, and the, and and the the rest like some of the band had not actually met him before, um, yeah. we like we booked to go to the studio, uh, not had a rehearsal or anything like that, just basically learnt the tracks from the demos, and he went into the studio and smashed it, and we were just like it's amazing. Oh wow! So you hadn't jammed together before you recorded then, and we still haven't. Oh wow! <laughs> this is the thing, like the th like the fact that it's like you know the restrictions of of. Yeah. Uh, you know, of, of being in the same sort of area uh, with all the, you know, social distancing and stuff. We've not been able to actually rehearse through the tracks. So it's been a completely different sort of way of doing things, um, I think, for anybody, really. I mean, if, if people oh, do, yeah. I mean, but, but for us, you know, so we've basically we've come up with the ideas, send the ideas around to each other um, and then demo it up on GarageBand and then go from there, really, and then... And then so we learned our bits, went in the studio, did our bits. And then, you know, they become those songs that are, you know, going to go onto the album. Yeah, I think a lot of bands, like you say, everyone's in the same boat. And a lot of bands are having to record in this way at the moment. I was chatting to, uh, to Dane of Phil Campbell and the, and the Bastard Sons uh, last week. And he was saying when they were recording their album, he said they were fortunate enough they had, they'd had everything written um, prior to recording. But... Um, Todd was uh, producing and recording it as well. And he said yeah. Todd was literally like in another room and he was Zooming Dane in the drum room, telling him, no, we want to try that fill again or whatever. And they all like, you know, rather than doing the, like, they did the first album in the more traditional way of all being in the room and, and thrashing it out, having to sort of piece each bit together again. Yeah, it, it is such a strange way of doing things. I mean, you know, um, <clears throat> usually we'd be in the, in the rehearsal room bashing it out almost almost flogging a song to death before it got into the studio. <laughs> so it's kind of been quite refreshing because, you know, we've been really enthusiastic about getting the band going again. You know, the, there's been really a, a really great air of positivity about it all from us all. And so I think everyone getting to do their own thing and, and just getting in the studio and doing it without, you know, without too much scrutiny or, or, or overthinking has, has, has really helped us to, to press forward with, with the recording that we've done really well, do you think you, you because you've done it that way and like you say you've not you've not had to for one of a better term think about it too much you've just gone in there and had that have you had that that joy again of playing together again do you think that's fed into what the material that you have recorded then i think it has yeah you know because myself and ozzy um had a mental writing spree during the foot like you know we had a few ideas before the lockdown yeah but then lockdown kicked in you know, obviously there's not nothing much else to do mm. and you know, being creative people, that's the kind of our outlet really. So it's just gone quite mental. And um, I think that's really, really helped. Yeah. You know, um, just, just, uh, you know, we're sending riffs to each other and, and different bits of songs and stuff. And then, and then just, you know, just, just the general feedback from each other about how great the songs sound and, and how great the riffs are. You know, I really and and we know we needed to like make it probably the best that we could do, and you know the best that we've ever done, the best that we've ever done. Yeah. 
the best that we've ever done. And um, yeah, you know, we needed to come back with with something that was blistering rather than just come back with something that was half half asked. So with the recording of, of the tracks and stuff, uh, you know, it's it, it's just been it's just been so different and so weird. And and obviously, you know, the Internet has, has, has really, really helped. And, and, and it's just one of those things, you know, it's, we just we've, we just found a new way of, of actually getting lots and lots of ideas done where we can kind of pick and choose, you know, the ones that are standing out straight away, songs that need a little bit more work. All that kind of stuff, you know. I, I just think it's the way ahead, and you know, we we even sort of have been saying to each other, you know, if only we'd been doing this previously, you know, who knows? The band me- might ne- never have gone on a hiatus, you know. We might have just carried on, and and just and just been doing stuff, you know, because it's just been very um, a, a, a very good way of getting that creative bug out, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I think you said like creative people, um, like musicians, etc. I think it's very easy to focus on the negative. Everything's been going on. I'm not trying to dispute anyone because obviously it's been a tough year for everyone. But um, like my wife, she's a, a pencil portrait artist, and um, the amount of work that was teaming out of her when she was in, in lockdown, she got her part time job to you know keep herself going to, to while she's trying to uh, make the art a full time thing. But the amount of artwork that was flowing out of her. Uh, during that period is was was astounding the amount of like musicians that I know both sort of locally based and uh, you know on the rising ranks and, and everyone else I get to talk to they've all said similar things to yourself where the the time was invaluable although it was like come out of a time that no one wanted to be in uh, sometimes you got to take the positive things with that and and create what you have that you know to have that time to sit down and just create was uh, pretty invaluable to a lot of people I think it is it's true yeah you know I mean there has been, you know, I mean, there has been reports that like a lot of musicians have decided to call it a day and stuff because, you know, they're not able to continue and they have to get, you know, they're going to have to get other work. Mm. And we know lots of people that are in the music industry side of things with, make, you know, events and stuff like that, that haven't had work for a long time, you know, that and and I mean, I, I guess that's what one of the one of the positive things, like you say, um about the lockdowns and things is that if you are creative and you can create you know it was the perfect time because you know you're not getting interrupted by anything and, you no. know and, and, and you can just you can you know it, it basically it was like rivers pouring out of pouring out of myself and Aussie you know um yeah. and and hopefully this new lockdown will do the same thing I mean <laughs> I mean the thing is you know we, we've probably demoed up enough songs already for like two or three albums oh wow so, so you know, so who knows? You know, I mean, like this next lockdown might might bring some some even better stuff. Now that you know the reaction to to the band getting back together and being out there and and all the stuff that we've been putting up and you know the the new fan club that we started with Patreon and and everything's been 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 so positive. You know, I think I think we're just we're just buzzing. You know, and we want to get out and do some gigs because you know live i think live is where we excel a lot and and you know and 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 obviously that's where we that's where we made a lot of a lot of our income was through live stuff as well so you know we want to get out there so we can we can make the band like you know a continuous thing and and something that we can carry on doing for a while really yeah of course i mean like you say um you wanted to uh you know hopefully the newest stuff for yourselves is going to come out some of the some of your best work well obviously on as you know rob sent across rob of stampede records sent across the, the single uh fly on your seat out last friday uh which we immediately put on on air and everyone like any, anyone who i got i got loads of emails from people saying you know we're really happy to have black spiders back and this is a great single i was having mates text me saying dude how did you get this so quick and i'm like i'm just fortunate that rob sent it to me <laughs> just, um, you know and it's a great single like, do you think it's like a good representation of the rest of the album that you've recorded then or um, I'm not sure actually because it's funny that because flying flying the suit wasn't actually going to be one of the first tracks that it, it wasn't well. On a personal note, I thought it was really good because obviously I, I I wrote this track. Yeah. But, um, I, I, I didn't I didn't particularly see the potential of it until until we got it in the studio, but it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna be. Um, part of the first set of demos but it ended up being um because 
I can't actually, I can't actually remember why we changed it. Like, like we were going to do another song, and, yeah. and we changed it at the last minute to do this one, and it came out so well, it was like, wow, this has got to be a single. Um, and well, you know, like the rest of the album, obviously, we've we've always had like, uh, you know, uh, a kind of a. I'm trying to, it's it's a very colourful rainbow that we have. It goes from very dark to black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so You've always had that light and shade within your albums, though. Always. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, th- this is kind of one of our upbeat sort of. You know, I, I guess I, I guess it's got a bit of a more of a commercial sound to it. You know, it's it's a bit more straightforward rock sort of song. You know, we have got yeah. some other, you know, grisly sort of um, heavier tunes. You know, we've got some that are a little bit left field ish, you know, but yeah, it, it, I think the album's probably going to be more in tune with the first record. Uh, more of Sons or, of the North sort of thing. Yeah. It's probably going to be more like Sons of the North, where everyone's going to be a banger. Yeah. Basically, you know, I mean, like, you know, obviously our, 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 uh, our inputs and, and, um, an influence from 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 bands that we know and listen to just comes from all parts of rock music. So it's very difficult, you know, because, uh, you know, we love Black Sabbath as much as we love ACDC, as much as we love Kiss, as much as we love, you know, Leonard Skinner. So it's really hard to say that the album will just be like flying the soup. But, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it actually is probably going to... It's probably going to be a mixture of the of Sons in the North and, the, and maybe the first few EPs, I would say. Okay, but you you say about you know you you know you've always loved your Sabbath and your ACDC etc. And you can't. There's certain bands like I mean that you put obviously ACDC have come back to the fold and it's two notes in you know it's an ACDC track you know what I mean that lick one lick from Angus and you know but I think you guys still have that sound I mean. You, whether it be, you know, uh, Flying the Soup or any track like Rat Mansion or, you know, Kiss Try to Kill Me or whatever, you guys immediately know that it's Black Spiders. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for us, I guess, to get any kind of um, perspective on it when you when you're in the middle of it. It's difficult. Oh, yeah, of course. And 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 it was our producer that actually said um, Flying the Soup should be a single because it reminded him in in a in a sort of. He said. He said he thought it could be as popular as Kiss tried to kill me. So we just couldn't argue with that, really. <laughs> well, I remember that was the one that, like, my mate um, Alec had seen you before I had. Um, he called you supporting. So I think it might have been when you guys supported Airborne. And okay, um, yeah, we've done that many times. <laughs> yeah. And um, he called you before I did. I wasn't at that particular gig for whatever reason. And he said to me, Lee, you need to check out. This was before I saw you at Download 2009. And, oh wow. Uh, yeah, and he had, he said, Ali, oh, you need to check out Black Spiders, man. You're going to love these. And he was with me at Download 09. And it was one of those moments where no one on the main stage was on that I was too too bothered by. And you guys were in the tube book tent, weren't you? Yes. And uh, Alec grabbed me and went, you're coming to watch this band with me, mate. And I was like, oh, sweet. So he, uh, we went and grabbed a beer and, and went into the tent. And, yeah, that was it. I was just like, Alec, Al- me and Alec are very similar in taste. So when, when Alec says to me, you're going to like this band, 9.5 times out of 10 I do <laughs> so uh excellent yeah. uh yeah well that was that was that and when you guys played the kiss tried to kill me I thought that I, I it's not spoofing the like the, the darkness or anything obviously but I just thought I, 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 I thought it was brilliant cheers I mate was... I mean yeah I mean like that that 2009 um appearance at download was was great because I think I think up until that point we'd only done like sort of very smallish sort of gigs and and certain supports with people okay. you know? and um yeah I don't, I don't think we'd even done any headline shows at that point i'm not sure and um i, I do remember we were very worried because we were like thinking god this tent's massive it's gonna be it's gonna look shit there's gonna be nobody there and we went out and it was rammed it was, was rammed in there man yeah yeah we, we you know we were just so blown away i mean we were always blown away when 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 we go to gigs and you know especially like festivals like that and there's people there to see us it's just crazy i mean and yeah. 
any time I've seen, well, and then then I think the next, well, next, not next time I saw you, but the next festival I saw you, yeah, it was uh, Sonosphere, and again that was rammed out stage out for there as well. Was that the one where we did the Jaeger stage? Yeah, yeah, because that was that was mad. I mean, obviously, you know, there was a lot of people that didn't really want to go and watch Biffy Clyro, so we were, you know, so we <laughs> they were stuck with us basically. But yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Because that was such a small stage, and you know, I've seen some footage from from that recently, um, and some photos. And the amount of people that are actually there, it goes, it kind of kind of went all the way back from there, all the way back past where the fairground was. The yeah, people. coming out of it was just mental. Because at the time, we kind of thought that the crowds were just mingling, so we thought it was going from the main stage, just people crushed all the way up to where we were. But then. When you look at the photos and some of the footage, you realise that people are like actually watching our stage. So it was just <laughs> mental. Oh, that it's was really... a mental crowd for that one, mate. It really was. It was, yeah. So speaking of gigs, there you've probably got some decent shows lined up with like Hard Rock Hell and um, Heretic Fest. I know Hannah quite well. She was. Uh, yes. In, uh... Uh, yeah, so we've got Heretic Heretic Fest on Sunday, the second of May. Um, the Hard Rock Hell, um, unfortunately, isn't until next november yeah um, that got pushed back recently didn't it yeah but you know with a bit of luck um you know there has been a few other tours that we were gonna do that have been either postponed or cancelled outright yeah um that we weren't announced for because you know they were wondering whether or not they're actually going to happen um so i'm sure there might be some other stuff i mean i think as soon as as soon as gigs are available to do um, our agent will be on it, you know. I mean, like we're ready to do something. Um, so, we're, we're like with a bit of luck, we'll get to play some of the other festivals if they happen next summer. Um, and hopefully, we might get to go out and do some shows before that. Whether it's like you know some bigger shows, a couple of bigger shows supporting someone else, or we get to go out and do a couple of one-offs on our own. Um, hopefully, you know, we will because um, you know we're hoping to um, hoping to have another track out before before you know the end of march and then at some time in the spring putting our album out so so yeah about the album is that is that what you're aiming for is it spring next year to to release yeah the album? You know, well that's the thing you know there's certain there's certain things within the music business with the you know with with the way the industry goes that you know you have to obviously the, all the mechanics of it and stuff mean that um we can't actually just put it out before Christmas, which we do. We, we would love to do, you know. Yeah, of course. But um, but actually, you know, the, getting the physical copies made and all that, so everything's sorted out. It's probably going to be sometime, at the, you know, springtime. No, no, fair play. So obviously, like you said, it's been a been a funny year uh, for for everyone in the music industry, from the bands every all the way through to, you know, techs and, and road crew and everyone else in the venues, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you got any plans for like the immediate future with like the today and the year and into 2021 other than obviously the release of the album mill or anything? Um, well, no, not not really. You know, we're, we're hoping to get in a rehearsal room at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of things depend on, you know, um, the way this virus is going. You know, I mean, people thought it'd be finished by the end of the year, but like it's come back even stronger. So who knows what it's going to be like next year? We don't know what the restrictions on gigs are going to be like next year. Um, we might even end up just doing, you know, recording another album if, if we can actually do that restrictions permitting. Um, you know, so by the time we actually get out and do some gigs, we might have actually had two albums out. Who knows? You know, th things are up in the air. You just have to kind of move with move with the science, I guess, is, is what <laughs> we're doing. You know, I mean... Um, everything goes into lockdown this weekend yeah like luckily we've recorded stuff for the album so we just like we're just working on you know artwork and track listing and all that kind of stuff at the moment um so it's ready to go um and then you know hopefully we'll you know there'll be an announcement before the end of the year about the actual album itself and and all that and and that's what we're working to you know i mean there's no no other gigs to work towards because I guess, fingers crossed, crossed, you know, Heretic Festival will still go ahead, but anything maybe yeah. before might be, you know, just pie in the sky thinking, basically. No, no, I think, uh, 
I think you could be right there. I think, uh, I'm, well, I'm coming down to Herisig Fest, so I'm hoping that one's definitely on for sure. Hannah's put on a hell of a lineup over those three days. It's, uh, yes, it's yeah, a good weekend, that. Yeah. It'll be really good to get back, you know. And, and the thing is, um, that's where we did our last show, so it kind of makes sense that that might be our first show back as well, you know. So, like a phoenix rising from the flames. <laughs> Right, well, at the beginning of the interview, we're going to play Fly In Your Suit to open it up, but what song would you like us to play the interview out on? Uh, fly In The Soup, mate. Is it Fly In The Soup? Fly In The Soup, yes. I, I, knew, I knew I'd written that down wrong, but we will be playing that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just hoping Rob hasn't written it down wrong. <laughs> I'll have to check my emails on that one. <laughs> it could so be me. What song would I like you to play? Yeah. Well, we've been we've been discussing this because on our we've got like a new um, we've got like a new fan fan club site um, that's on Patreon, and um, and one of the one of the videos we did for that was uh, the band talking about um, well we're doing like a questions and answers thing, and um, we were all talking about favourite tracks that we like to play, and um, one song that stood out I think more than more than many of the others. Uh, was Blood of the Kings. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, Blood of the Kings, I think, would be the choice there, uh, Lee. Oh, we'll go with that then. Well, thanks for your time, Pete, man. I really appreciate it, and uh, good to speak to you. Anytime, mate. And, um, yeah, hope it goes well. And, you know, at some point, let's have a beer and, um, you know, talk about all the good times we had during the lockdown and, 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 and how things are going to go into the future. Let's do it, mate. Let's hope we're doing it at Heretic first. Sweet, mate. All right, mate. Cheers, buddy. Yeah.